happy Saturday, West Texas. I'm Natalie Cargill, and I am here with my business besties, Shauna Garcia and Christy Jo Lightfoot. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Doing good. Not good. Not a jolly start this holiday season. Yes. I know, I know. We're already doing Christmas today. Oh, my goodness. Well, you go, girl. I just like you to be an overachiever, so that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, today's going to be fun. As you know, at home, Saturdays for us are all about success. And today we are discussing when to celebrate your victories, the big victories, the small victories, and how do you celebrate your success in general? I think love languages play a lot into this, too, how you celebrate, because I'm a goal origin. I mean, I love goals. I set them. But for me, I just need to know that I did it. And then I need to call people that know and love me to tell me what a great job I did. I don't need the gifts. I'm going to have champagne anyway. So I just need somebody to say, hey, you did great. And then I'm I'm good. I love that, Shauna. And I'm an affirmation girl myself. Mm -hmm. I, I Because I like to receive them, I love to give them. And when I give them to my husband, he's like, why are you playing me? You don't have to build me all the way up, okay? You don't have to do that. But it's my love language, so I feel you on that because mm -hmm. I do like being um, reminded or encouraged that, wow, you did well. So I like that too. And you know, day by day, I'm finding um, myself wanting to take a break from this or go grab a little bit of that. It could be a glass of wine. It could be a chocolate little mm -hmm. treat. So even if it's something like go get a pedicure, go get a massage, just intentionally like sometimes I go do it anyways because who doesn't like a massage? But I try to actually set something that when I reach this, this is what I'm going to do. And usually it just depends on my mood. It's everything from, you know, champagne, mm -hmm. um, massages i've done those before. Hey, Christy jo. yes whoa this is carried away pre-2020 i know um my love language is gifts it's funny that you said that so i'm all about buying myself a, a subscription to um whatever it is so i've had um you know the makeup subscriptions always love those because i've found some things that i really um treasure you know, and that it's become a staple in my makeup bag. And then always even like business ones. So I love business subscription boxes too. Those are always great. Well, you know, after one of our masterminds, I don't know if you guys remember Susie Rob, she came on and she creates her own subscription box. And that was the first time I really kind of thought of including it into my own branding and business because a lot of times on the show people will ask oh where'd you get those earrings or what lipstick are you wearing or where'd you get that dress and um you know i that's something i'm looking to incorporate into 2021 maybe on a quarterly basis because um it's like all of my favorite things and you can just get it all in a box mm -hmm. right well i know we're going to be going to a break soon but real quick I, there's a difference between influence and impact um, and so what do you ladies do with your business in those two respects and how are you driving people to your business and how are you measuring the activity? Mm. Christy Joe, you want to go first? Well, in 2021, I'm going to be probably using Facebook ads a little bit more than I have been. I've done this before in the past, mm -hmm. took a break from 2020 because they're not my favorite thing. And I, I feel like uh, even just having like opt-ins on your website, that's always important. You know, I've been a web designer for since 2010. So I always think that, you know, you want to drive them there, but you also want to capture that. Mm -hmm. um, but using things to drive them, such as social media, and then of course, paid advertising. I love that. And there's so many ways to collaborate. I find myself through the connect, um, reaching out to other women that offer things that people in, in my network and myself need to be great. Right. For me, it's always social media is a good platform, um, but I'm old fashioned. Like I write everything down spreadsheet. I'm still that person. And, you know, you just got to track your touches and, and put your foot forward and keep going. Yes, got to make the contacts with the people. Well, as uh, phenomenal female entrepreneurs, of course, our goal is always to win. And next, we are talking about taking the time to celebrate yourself. But first, here is this week's tech tip with Kat Shelby. And uh, coming up, Victoria Prince is dropping this week's Marketing Minute. And it's all about communication. 
Well, as we've determined, the first rule of marketing is is follow up, follow up, and follow up. Actually, the first three rules of marketing. And I think the thing to know is that you actually are communicating. It's difficult sometimes to give people news that is not what they want to hear, such as in real estate, oh, we have an offer. Maybe they don't want to hear that there was a pet odor, that in the buyer's opinion, it was a little too high. They didn't like the floor plan. If people know what they're dealing with, they can deal with anything I've found over the years. If we're just silent because we don't want to share something that is less than what they really want to hear, we may be doing them a disservice and probably doing ourselves a disservice by not communicating. So the first thing about communicating is actually doing it. Mm -hmm. Some people prefer personal phone call, mm -hmm. text message, email, or whatever you've set up with them. I think one of the first in the, your initial meeting with your customer, you need to set up how you're going to, how you're going to communicate. What, what do they prefer? Is there ever a time when it's not appropriate to reach out or is there a time when you should reach out when you haven't heard back from them? Again, I would err on the side of communicating more frequently, be a pest rather than disappear. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest thing that I heard uh, sellers specifically say, I didn't ever hear from my agent. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were working on my behalf. Sometimes I knew that that agent had been working on their behalf and it was clear to me that they just hadn't communicated that they were working on their behalf. Mm -hmm. So yeah. keep a log, keep in touch, follow up, follow up, follow up. <laughs> I love it, Victoria. Good tips, good tips. More with Victoria coming up next week. We'll take a quick break and be right back. Good morning and happy holidays. This is Kat with this week's Tech Tip. So last week I talked about the importance of doing a technology review at least once a year. Well, this week I want to talk about the importance of doing a cybersecurity review at least twice a year. It's so important to check your cybersecurity posture, especially in this day and age. So in 2020, cybersecurity attacks were up by 600%. The other thing is 67% of the attacks that happened were with businesses that had between two to a hundred employees. And sadly, out of those attacks, 70% of those businesses were completely ill-prepared for it. There's a couple of things that you can look at. You know, obviously you have vulnerability scanning, check and make sure your firewall's up to date, see if you need DDoS protection. But there's other things that you need to look at. Like what is your disaster recovery plan? How fast can you get back up? And that's what Shelby Tech's all about. We're here to help you. Thank you. Well, welcome back to the show. And we're so excited. You know, today is all about celebrating yourself, right, ladies? The big victories, the small victories, they're all worth celebrating. And I'm excited because today, if you are a first time home buyer or wanting to become a first time home buyer in 2021, Nicole Poole is here today and she prides herself on putting integrity and people first in her business. So if you're looking to buy your first home or maybe a second home, third home, um, she's got the deets. So Nicole, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'm, I'm happy you're here. Um, you know, you're going to educate us today a little bit more about the buying process for first time home buyers, particularly. But what I loved is something you mentioned on the line when we visited before this interview. And you say a lot of people start by hopping on Zillow. They hop on Zillow, um, you know, whatever the other websites are, and they go find their dream home for, you know, half a million dollars. But you say that very first step should really be looking at the pre-approval process. So talk a little bit about what should be first. My goal really, um, you know, I'm in the housing business, but of selling and buying homes, helping people, but I really feel like I'm more in the people business um, because at the heart of it all, it makes me so happy just to help people and educate them um, in that pre-approval process. So there's a good rule of thumb. It's like the 28% rule. Um, you want 28% of your gross um, income, yearly income or monthly income to go towards your mortgage, no more than that, um, to ensure that you're comfortable in that um, situation. Um, and you also want to create a budget and um, start saving because there are going to be costs. You know, there's a down payment that you're going to want to put um, down on that home. 
um, and that's normally three to 20% of the um, home purchase price. So, and there are lots of different down payment options available. Um, I work with a lot of amazing local lenders um, that I can refer you to and recommend. Um, and you're also gonna want to start budgeting for those closing costs. Mm -hmm. um, there are just different fees that um, are required to close on a home. So um, closing takes about 30 days as well for those first time home buyers. But those costs can be like for title insurance, any escrow fees, um, any financing costs, taxes, different points. Wow. So, yeah. Um, how do you take the intimidation factor out of it for the buyer? Um, I use, I like to use a lot of graphics that kind of break it down. Um, you know, I, I text a lot, call a lot, um, and just really walk them through the whole process. Cause there's a lot of new vocabulary too, that mm -hmm. goes into it that can seem intimidating. Um, and honestly, I think sometimes when people do chat with me, and I'm like, all right, let's get you hooked up with the lender and get you pre-approved. They're like, oh, that's why are you telling me to do that? Like, I don't want to commit there just yet. Mm -hmm. But I think that people kind of it's enlightening and it gives them confidence mm -hmm. and it empowers them to move further with the process of buying a home. So, well, and I, Nicole, like you said, it's I think once a realtor realizes they're in the people business, the house part is, yes, that's the product. but It's really the service that you're providing. So I know when we did it, I always had certain things because you told the buyers everything to do, but there are some things we need to tell them not to do. You don't want to make um, any kind of really big purchases mm -hmm. or anything that's going to affect your credit um, because you do get, you don't get locked into your credit um, until, you know, you get approval from the lender. And so in that 30 days, you know, you don't want to make any big cash deposits into your account that can't be, um, verified through um, a, a, an account that the lenders verified. Um, so definitely you kind of want to be careful in that 30 days that you're really following all those steps because you don't want to get to that last day close. Don't day. go buy a car. Huh? Don't yes. go buy any big purchases ever. Don't go buy a car. Yeah. Don't go buy like finance on the furniture mm -hmm. for your new home because I know that's always exciting. Uh, washer dryers, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Nicole, if people have more questions about the process, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, definitely call me. My cell is 432-553-3679. Uh, call or text. I'm the best at that. Um, but you can always um, DM me on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Um, Instagram, I'm Nicole Poole, TX Realtor. And my new website is going to be coming out in a few days. So it's getting a little bit of a revamp and I'm super excited about it. It has a mortgage calculator on there. You can search for homes on there. There's a lot of blog posts that just kind of break it down, especially for first time home buyers or even if you're looking into investing. Um, so just lots of different fun stuff on there. I love it. Well, coming up next, the show continues. Marcy Crossland will be joining us to talk about her event. She has coming up this week and you won't want to miss it. But first, I mean, Pruitt is looking at the numbers for this week's real estate update. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the show. I'm Ashley Ariano with the Janine Pruitt team, and I am talking about the number one question we're being asked right now is, are home selling in a pandemic? So I am going to go over five tips on how to attract a buyer in a competitive market like it is today. So number one, um, the search starts online. All consumers are looking online at homes and that what that means is your photography has to be perfect. Um, you wanna make sure you're using an agent that uses professional photography, very key. Number two, um, does your home need staging? Uh, when you're interviewing an agent, make sure that they their packages include some kind of staging. Um, we, especially an experienced agent, they're going to have stagers at their at their fingertips and can help you out there. Um, number three, are you allowing enough time uh, for showings? If you're at work, give yourself enough time to go home and, and prepare the house and get it ready um, for the showing. Number four is once you're home, what to do. So you want to make sure that the home is clean. It smells great. This is when you want to light the candles, bake the cookies. Um, the buyer starts falling in love with the property as soon as they pull up. So you want to make sure your curb appeal uh, is on point. Make sure you blow off the leaves off the porch, sweep the rugs, put a new rug, sometimes a welcome mat that looks nice and homey, some fresh flowers. And number five, and finally, is price. 
Uh, you've got to make sure you're priced competitively in a, in, in a competitive market. When the buyer is looking at 10 to 15 homes sometimes before they get to yours, you want to make sure yours has the highest perceived value. So I hope these uh, brought value to you today. And um, if you need help, always give us a call with the Janine Pro team or you find us online. Well, happy Saturday, Marcy. Welcome to the show, girlfriend. Hey, how are y'all? Yeah. Great. Great. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Always happy to have you here. And today for your marketing minute, you're up close and personal with us like we love. And you have some things going on today at MC Aesthetics and BRL Salon. What can people expect? You know what we do? So we are closed this year um, for the whole week of Christmas, but today you can walk in from 10 to 2 without an appointment and do Botox or fillers. We have a huge 20% off promotion going right now. Um, you can even call in and buy gift cards um, for 20% off. And if you know, you know, we only do that a couple of times a year. That's a pretty big aesthetics um, discount. So now is definitely the time to buy it, even if you're not planning to treat until after the first of the year. <laughs> bye, bye. I just saw my own forehead moving. I'm like, I will be there too. <laughs> well, I've never had Botox, but I'm like totally willing to look into the opportunity because sooner or later, some, I'm going to need something. So if I, when, I, when, I'm t when I'm ready, Marcy, you know, I hit you up about some skincare, but when I'm ready for my Botox, I'm calling you. Honey, prevention is cheaper than correction. Remember That's that. Yeah. Get it before you need it. That's yeah. awesome. Well, Marcy, you are a, you're in business. You're still working. Are there, is there anything that you never thought you would do your business without that you're like, no, 2020, you can have it. You know, it's so funny that you're saying that, Shauna, because um, I and y'all heard me talk about this a lot, that I suffer from the, the disease of busyness. You know, I have to be doing a lot all the time. And I think what 2020 has taught me, like what I was saying earlier about closing for Christmas week, mm -hmm. you know, I like to have my workaholism typically in, in, you know, warp speed and full force during the holidays. And this year, I'm just not going to do it. You know, I'm going to leave behind what wasn't working for me. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't, I love what Shauna, what y'all were saying earlier, you know, if it's not making the money and bringing in the dollars and bringing the people and you're wasting your time and energy on it, you know, why? It's not doing what it's supposed to do. So um, I think for me, it's it's really been, um, and for all of us at MC Aesthetics, BRL, the hair extension line, um, figuring out what it's going to take. I think we've all been operating under this idea that magically on January 1st, you know, at 1201, the whole world is going to reset and there's going to be no COVID and no homeschooling. And, you know, that's just not what it, that's not reality. Um, just adapting as it, as it's changing, because we have seen more new things happen, more craziness this year. And so just being open to change and you can't just hold on to things that don't work. Awesome. You know, I, I just, I'm sorry. I know it's not my turn, um, but I love that you say that because my, my Tracy Campoli, one of my friends, she says, you know, she's Italian. She says, I just throw it all on the wall, throw the spaghetti to the wall and see what sticks. And it's okay when things don't stick. I think we have to be uh, comfortable with being willing to see, try, you know, I mean, it takes a lot of courage to say, okay, I'm going to try this new product, this new service, I'm gonna invest, you know, whatever into this, but it might not work and that's okay. So I love that. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to know what do you have coming into 2021? Because I know you usually have a lot of new things. You introduced, um, you know, a lot of new procedures and things like that. What do you have planned for 2021? 2020 has sort of freed up some time for me to kind of tap back into part of this industry and part of medicine that I love so much. I love to educate. So we are transitioning into more of an educational facility and we're teaching people how to do those cutting edge things that we brought to West Texas that you previously had to travel four or five, six hours or, you know, catch a plane to go have done. So we're teaching those things and trying to become more of an educational hub and really kind of mm -hmm. focusing on that right now. Awesome. You'll always have a student. Anytime you can transition what you do into an educational opportunity, you'll always be in business because there's always someone that wants to learn exactly how you do what you do. Um, 
genius. Very good. Love it so much. Well, you guys, it's Saturday. You know, it's a week before Christmas. I think it's just six days now, right? So whatever you have to do, the last minute stocking stuffers, make sure you head on down to uh, Marcy Crossland. She can get you all the way together, right? All the way together. All right. Well, um, with healthy skin also comes healthy hair. So I'm excited for our next guest. It's Autumn uh, Vasquez. And she is up next from Ray Clark Salon. She's sharing tips to keep your hair healthy right here in West Texas. And that's going to be a good one. Can't wait. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome on this amazing Saturday morning. I am Kimberly Cowan with Kimberly Cowan Photography and today, since Christmas is right around the corner, I thought I would share, share some little ideas that you could use photos as Christmas gifts this year um, to put under the tree for mom and dad or that special somebody since photos are forever. Uh, so first off, I'd like to share like Christmas ornaments are a good idea. So here's my cute little kiddos. I've had this for many years um, and a lot of labs do this like Walgreens or CVS or whoever um, online like Mpix. so here's a really cool example so put a little ornament on the tree mom would really love that um, another favorite of mine um, is jewelry so you can put a little uh, another great idea is magnets uh, put your cute little family on a magnet how about a photo cube some labs show these, I believe Walmart does. And moms really, really love these. So I know a lot of people have already taken their family pictures these here and you've got those digital. So why don't you create a really nice album? Anywho, those are just a few little ideas that you can use to print your pictures out this holiday season for that special someone. And I really hope y'all guys have a great rest of the weekend and we'll see you again soon. Oh, welcome back to the show, West Texas. So we're talking healthy hair. And here in West Texas, I think we can all agree that the water here can make it very difficult to keep your mane healthy and shiny and conditioned. Um, so we're going to talk to Autumn a little bit about some of the things that we can do right from home to keep our hair in good shape. Welcome to the show, Autumn. Hi, thank you for having me. All right, so what can we do at home? You know, some of us with the pandemic and everything going on, we can't afford to get our hair done all the time. So if we are at home and just want to add a bit of hydration or love to our mane, what do you recommend we do? Um, I definitely recommend cold showers. I cannot stress that enough to my clients. And even though, even mm -hmm. I can barely take a cold shower, doing like just a cold rinse to your hair can really lock in moisture. And even using like a boar bristle brush to push down oils from your roots to your ends really helps during like hmm. when it's windy outside as like earlier this week. It just helps like get rid of the dirt and push those oils down even before a wash as well. I love that. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about the six styles of extensions. Um, okay, so I am certified in Beauty Works extensions mm -hmm. and on stage hair extensions. So with Beauty Works, I offer tape-in, um, fusion tips, and then micro-beading tips and hand-tied extensions. And the hand-tied extensions are pretty popular right now, mm -hmm. but in on stage, I do a beaded weft, which is also, it's lot similar to a hand-tied, but not sewn in, it's more beaded in. And also um, another kind of type of micro-beaded um, extension, but the bead is wrapped in hair, so you can't see the bead. It's more for like people that have finer hair and they want them more towards the front of your hair so that when you do part it, you can't see the extension at all. Mm -hmm. I find when you do have hair extensions that you tend to not do your hair as much and put as much heat on it because the extension does hold a curl much longer and you don't have to wash your hair as much as you do whenever you don't have extensions in. So it helps get train your hair to withstand like um, going longer without a wash or mm -hmm. key on your hair and it helps it grow out like a lot quicker. I heard that. <laughs> oh, wow. Autumn, you go girl. I'm so excited. I can't wait to come back to the table with you in five years and hear all the things. <laughs> And maybe sooner than that. Well, congratulations, you guys. Make sure you give her a call. Of course, you can follow her on Instagram at 
Hair by Autumn B. We are going to take a quick break. Coming up next, Keita Williams is dropping step three on how you can build your master brand and uh, much more coming up after the break. Hey, I'm back. It's your girl, Keita Williams, your fave celebrity publicist and brand architect. That's right. I'm back for week three, and it's all about figuring out what that next step is. Week one was all about being authentic. Week two was about being intentional. And week three, baby, is about getting your tribe. Okay, so let's get right into it. So I love a good acronym, right? So the word tribe, we know how to spell that, right? T-R-I-B-E. So let's start with that T. T stands for being a trailblazer, her, right? And I've always said this. It's important for you guys to make sure you surround yourself with other people who are in other spaces higher than you are. So those are called your trailblaze hers. Surround yourself with those people this year. They say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future, right? Show me your trailblazers and I'll show you where your brand's going to be, right? So it's especially true for you to make sure that you are in a successful place with other people who are very successful, if not more successful than you. You don't want to be on the same plateau with the same people, right? So think about five people, five trailblazers. You don't have to know them personally. They can be virtually because that's where we are right now, right? So if it's all about finding those people that you can learn and grow from and with, okay? Because they have the blueprint, right? So put your hard hat on. Let's go to number three. Reintroduce yourself, right? It's all about reintroducing yourself. That's what the R stands for. Reintroduce yourself to your community, whether it is on social media, reintroduce yourself to the people that think they know you for what they know you for. Make sure you reintroduce what you're doing. Show them where you are now. Show them the things that you have that's going on that's fresh and new, okay? Because it's very important. Ring that alarm. That's what the R is. Reintroduce yourself and ring the alarm so that they know exactly where you are and what you're doing. The I is about being your own invest her, okay? Be your own invest her. Invest in you. Invest in her. This is what's important. It's okay. Invest in yourself. Sometimes being an investor is about self-care, but I'm all about putting the money back into the machine, okay? So invest in your business for 2021. The B is for be accountable. You got to be accountable for the goals that you set, right? We're our own mast her, build hers. So be accountable in that space. The last letter of tribe is E. It's my favorite. Okay, I got three for you. Expand, evolve, elevate. So that's the last. Expand, evolve, elevate. That's what we're going to do. So you have it. Try. T-R-I-B-E. Trailblazers in your circle. Reintroduce yourself to the people around you. Invest in her. Be accountable and expand, evolve, and elevate your brand. That's the tip for the week. I'm your girl, Keita Williams. Keep your hard hats on, be your own leader, and be your own master builder. See you next week. So much good stuff. We hope you enjoyed the show. Oh, come on, Christy Joe. Give us a Merry Christmas. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Come on, girl. Merry Christmas. Come on, Shauna. Where's the jolly Christmas for Oh, you know, I'm, I've been jolly for two months. I love Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. And we will see you right back here next week. Well, Shauna's not going to be with us next week, but she'll see you thereafter. But you guys make it a great Saturday. And we'll see you next week. Bye.